Welcome to Proverbs for Life Today, a ministry of ChristAssembly.org. My name is Bert Allen. Today we come to Proverbs chapter 4, and it's a study on wisdom. Solomon is explaining to his son how he can make the most of his spiritual life and have a good earthly life as well. But none of this study will really make sense to you if you've never been born again. That means that by faith you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and there's been a day in your life where you receive that as a free gift of forgiveness and salvation. If you want to know more about that and how you can be born again today, by faith alone, then stick around to the end of the video. I'll be standing in front of a bricks background and you can hear from the scriptures the best news you'll ever hear about eternal life. But for now, let's dive into the study. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 16, we read, For they cannot sleep unless they do evil, and they are robbed of sleep unless they make someone stumble. And these are the people who live on the path of evil. They are evil men who entice others to do evil with them. And they have these shiningly bad characteristics. And the first part is, it says they cannot sleep unless they do evil. And this whole idea of doing evil is very, very serious. They cannot sleep unless they do evil right here. Like so many other things in the Old Testament, evil is something you do with your actions. It's also a state of badness, but it's often, too, something that people do. They go out and they do this evil. And here... It says, these people on the path of wicked men, these wicked people who travel that path, they cannot even sleep until they do evil. So think about that. That means that every day they're doing evil. It's part of their life. It's a path they walk. It is truly who they are. And you don't want to be like that. You don't want to go down that path. Well, what kind of evil are we talking about? Well, evil today and even evil then, thousands of years ago when, Mos when um, Solomon wrote this, came in all kinds of flavors. But it was enticing people to do evil. It's taking money that doesn't belong to you. It's robbing people, lying in wait, killing people, stealing. Evil comes in a multitude of forms. But the quality of those people who perform evil, who walk in the way of evil, well, they can't even sleep until they do evil. But like we often see, there's another half to the verse right here. And it says, And they are robbed of sleep unless they make someone stumble. And I'm going to circle that word, stumble. You know, it's not enough for these folks that they are walking the way of the wicked. They're heading to destruction. But they want to take somebody else with them. They want to make somebody else stumble. They want to take a righteous person who's been born again by faith and make them fall into evil. And as a matter of fact, sleep plays a prominent role in this too. They are robbed of sleep unless they can make someone stumble. That means this is a daily activity. They do not want their eyelids to fall until they have made someone stumble. Can you imagine that, that there are people in your life who want to make you stumble? They want to make you think like they think, evil thoughts. They want you to do evil like they do. They want you to walk down the path of the wicked with them. And that's really not a good idea. It's a terrible idea. Well, okay, so how do you stay out of this? Uh, stay off the path of the evil. Turn away from it. Don't go near it. These are the folks that are on that path. And it's a mighty sleepless path for them. For the bad guys, unless they make you do evil, unless they make you stumble. Those two qualities of the evil people, they're not happy just being evil themselves. They want to do the evil and they want to make you stumble. Wow. So God's not like that. He'll give you wisdom. You can stay away from the evil people. You don't have to adopt their ways. You don't have to walk down their path. You can overcome evil by following Jesus Christ every day walking behind him, listening to his voice, reading the Bible, believing what it says, worshiping him, glorifying him in all that you do. So let's pray and give thanks. Lord, we thank you so much that you want us to stay off of the path of evil. 
Do you want us to stay away from people who cannot sleep until they do evil? That their eyelids are robbed of sleep until they make someone stumble? Father, we pray that we would stay away from such people and that we would not be caught up in doing such things ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for your great loving kindness. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I close the video, I'd like to share with you four verses about eternal life. I often ask people this simple question, why should Jesus let you into heaven? And the answer to that question surprises many people because it comes from the Bible and it's simple and it's clear. Most folks when they hear that question they tell me well I've been good or tried to do more good than bad or I tried hard or I've done a lot of nice things and I hope God will let me into heaven. They somehow think if their good works outweigh their bad works, that God will let them in. But God says, actually, I'll let people into heaven because of a free gift. But the story from Jesus starts with four verses, and I'm going to read them one at a time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 You see, for every person who lives today, on earth and human flesh we've all sinned every one of us we've all told a lie we've all done or said something that made somebody else angry and we were doing it out of anger ourselves we've all done things to hurt other people at one time or another god says that's all sin and i look upon that as falling short of my glory god says god says we should never fall short of his standard, which is the glory of God. Well, is it serious that we've sinned? Should I be worried about that? Everybody sinned. Why should I worry? Well, consider Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, that all of us deserve the death penalty. At the moment we sin, we incurred the death penalty for the smallest sin or the biggest sin. I'm happy that Romans 3, 20, 6, 23 continues and says, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if you've been listening carefully and thinking about what the Bible says, so far we've learned that we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all deserve the death penalty. This doesn't sound like good news until you read the last part of that last verse. It says that God has a free gift for all of us. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord and it's eternal life. The free gift of eternal life that only Jesus Christ can give you. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. Why would God offer us this great gift if we're all sinners? Well, Romans 5.8 tells us. It says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. God loves sinners like you and like me. He died in my place and in your place. He paid the death penalty for me. I often illustrate the free gift like this. That I have this old Nissan truck. It has 285,000 miles on it. It's not that great a truck. It sits at the beach every day. But I illustrate the point this way. I hold up the keys to my truck and I say, I'm going to make you a symbolic gift of my truck. But until you take the keys out of my hand, it's not your truck yet. Well, let me tell you what I mean. A lot of people have been going to church for years. They know all about Jesus. They can quote verses about Jesus. But they know in their heart that they're not quite right with God. And there's never been a day in their life where they've been born again and they know it. You see, they're just staring at the keys in God's hand and he's offering you the free gift today of saying, reach out by faith and receive that free gift and take it into your heart today. Receive the free gift. Okay, how do we do that? Well, Romans 10.9 tells us how to do that. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he means saved from the death penalty, eternal destruction. So 
we can receive that free gift right now by faith, and we can pray a prayer together. I urge you to pray with me. I'm going to pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I confess that I am a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. I confess, too, that I deserve the wages of sin, which is death. But, Lord, you offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that you love me and that God died on the cross for me, that Jesus Christ is God, and he died on the cross for me. You paid the death penalty for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, and I accept that free gift, Lord. Thank you so much that you have forgiven me, in your name I pray, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love you to send me an email and we'll rejoice together. Send me the email at friend at christassembly.org. That's friend at christassembly.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. Scripture quotations taken from the NASB, New American Standard Bible, copyright 1995 by the Lockman Foundation. Used by permission, all rights reserved.